in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to use perspective transform in Photoshop. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three ways to use perspective transform to transform, manipulate, and also place objects in perspective in Photoshop. So let's start with the first use case, and that is straightening up signs and text in perspective. We can do that with the perspective warp tool in Photoshop, and you can access the tool by going to edit, then perspective warp. Once you do that, you'll be able to click on the corner of the sign and drag to draw a plane. Now we can click on these points in the corners to align them with the edges of the sign and specify the perspective. And once you're happy with your grid, you can start warping the image and switch to the warp mode by clicking here. Now you can either click and drag these points to manipulate the image, or you can do this automatically by clicking here to straighten the image vertically and here to straighten the image horizontally. And as you can see, the text on the sign is straightened now and we can click here to accept the changes. Now all that is left to do is to click on C to get the crop tool and we can crop the image to match the edges of the sign. So that's how you can use the perspective warp tool in Photoshop to straighten up signs and text in perspective. Now let me show you the second use case of perspective warp in the next example. So in this example, we have a picture of a building and we can use the same tool to completely manipulate and transform the look of the building. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's go to edit and perspective warp again. Now to draw the plane, I'm gonna start by clicking on the top corner of the building and click and drag all the way to the bottom edge. Now again, we can click on these points to move them and match them with the perspective of the building. We can also draw another plane to specify the left side of the building. And as you're doing that, you will see the two lines gets highlighted and when you release, it will automatically snap with the first grid. And let's align the points again with the perspective. And you can also use shift and click and drag to the left to extend your mesh. So now that we have drawn the plane, we can switch to the warp mode. And again, you can click and drag to move and change the shape of the building. You can also use shift and click on this line. And once you do that, you will see that the line is highlighted in yellow. And now we can move both of these points. So we can move the edge of the building all the way to the left or all the way to the right. And as you can see, we are completely changing the perspective of how this building looks. We can also drag to the top and make it look like it is a wide angle shot. And of course, there's a limit to how you can use this tool. As you can see, there are some parts of the street elements that gets warped, like this trash can and some of the elements on the top. And we can fix that by selecting them individually. Alright, so that's how you can use the Perspective Warp tool in Photoshop to manipulate buildings. Let me show you now how you can place objects in perspective in our third example. So in this example, I have this picture of your room and I also have this picture frame. And let's say you want to place this picture in perspective so that you can see how it looks on the room in perspective. So let me show you how you can do that. First, I'm gonna turn off this layer for the moment. I'm gonna select my background layer and then you're going to go to filter and this time click on vanishing point. So the vanishing point filter works a little bit similar to the perspective warp grid. So with the create plane tool selected, you're gonna click on the corner to add a point and then click again and follow the edges of the wall to create your plane. So I'm gonna add one more point here 
and the last point is going to be here so I'm following the bottom edge of the wall to determine the bottom corner okay so once you add your fourth point you will see that the grid plane is created and you can also click and drag on these points to further modify the grid so if you see the grid turns to yellow or red that means the perspective is not right so it's just a matter of clicking and dragging these points to fix the perspective You can also click on the zoom tool and you can zoom in or zoom out and further modify these points using alt or option. Okay, so now that we have created our grid plane, you can switch to the edit plane tool or you can click on V. And now you can click and drag from the edge to extend the grid plane to the edge of the wall. And you will see that it will automatically scale in perspective. Alright, so now that we have created the grid plane of this side of the wall, we can switch back to the create plane tool. And you can also click and drag on this point to extend the grid plane of this side of the wall. As you can see, the perspective of this side is not correct. So we can again click and drag on these points to fix the perspective and follow the edge of the wall. And then again, I'm going to click and drag to extend my grid plane to the very edge of the wall. All right, I'm going to switch back to my create plane tool. And I'm going to click and drag here to also extend the grid plane of the ceiling. Okay, so now we have defined the three grid planes that makes up this wall. We can also extend the bottom part, but that's going to be enough for the purposes of this tutorial. So once you're happy with your grid, you're going to click OK to accept the changes. So now that we have created our plane, we can now place this picture frame in perspective. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control or command click on the layer thumbnail to load it as a selection. Then I'm going to click on control C to copy this image to the clipboard. Now I can turn off this layer and I'm going to also click on control D to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to go to filter vanishing point again. So as you can see, the grid plane is still active and we can click on control or command V to paste our image here. So this picture is a little bit big for the moment. So we can switch to the transform tool and I'm going to hold shift and scale the image down a little bit. So as soon as you start moving the image, you will see that it will automatically start following the grid plane that we just created and it's moving and scaling in the right perspective. So as you can see, if I move it to the right side of this wall, it's transforming and following the right perspective. I can also move it to the grid at the top and as you can see, it's transforming in the right perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this image here and I'm going to scale it down and place it in this side of the wall. So once you are happy with your image placement, you can click OK to accept the changes. And that's it. As you can see, the image is now placed in perspective. And the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to right click on the layer and I'm going to paste some layer style that I created before to make the image look a little bit more realistic. So that's how you can use the vanishing point filter to place objects in perspective. All right, so that's three ways to use perspective transform in Photoshop. I hope you found value in this tutorial and you found this tutorial helpful. And if it did, giving a like to this video would really help this tutorial reach more people. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on new tutorials. You'll also find all the project files to follow along in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.